Yes, I knew you took it off. be so sad. After all that you have said and you have done, the tender proofs you've shown me of your love. Look, here I am in paradise, and you are sighing in a private wilderness. Now that you and I are one, do you regret it? No, Valère. I regret nothing. Nothing. The tender force of your sweet words of love have swept all my doubts, my second thoughts away. And yet, yet I confess a nagging fear. Perhaps I love you more deeply than I ought, more blindly than I should. But you love me, Elise, and we are now betrothed, so what is there to fear? A thousand dreadful things, and all at once, my father's wrath, my family's disdain, the world's reproach. Most of all, Valera, I fear your heart. For I have heard, and who has not, that men will often change and veer from hot to cold, from passion to content. They take a flower, they tend it and water it and make it grow. And then criminally stamp it underfoot. If men are so, then I am not a man. Suspect me of anything, my love, but do not doubt that I will do my duty <coughs> to love and to honour you until I die. No, Valerie, you men are all the same. Unanimous in praise and acclaim. Love only knows the one true. But then, then you see a hundred worried men, and each giving different reasons for their flight. They know me by my actions, not my words, for they are just as full of love and twice as pure. Do not judge me on the deeds I haven't done, but throw your heart wide open to the sun. Don't board it up with morbid premonition or hide behind the shadows of suspicion, but give me time, my darling, give me time. Do not pass judgment until you see the crime. I will prove in what I say and what I do, my simple, honest, guileless love for you. Pretty words, hollow rhymes, and yet to me they sound like music. Yes, I know you love me, and I know you'll not do my heart an injury, I'm sure of it. Only fear is what the world might say. What could they say? You don't understand. If only people could see you as, as you are, and know the things I know, and see the things that I see. Well then my love for you would be its own excuse. The way that heaven flung us both together. The way you snatched me from the jaws of death, and, and risked your life to save my own, and plucked me from the belly of the hungry sea, remember? The loving care you lavished upon me then and the ceaseless homage you paid me since, which trial and tribulation have not dimmed. The way you kindly cast aside all thoughts of parents <coughs> and home, and stayed in this house, concealing your true rank as steward to my father. In my eyes, Valet, you've been enough, more than enough to warrant our betrothal. But you never know, others may see it differently. I have done much, that is true. I have been vigilant, but... <coughs> Love alone compelled my course of action. Ignore the rest and concentrate on that. And as for your misgivings, well, your father is so extreme and so perverse and such a devil and a miser and a wretch. And <coughs> the dire constraints he puts upon his children are excuse enough for anything that you do, so make him think that grief has driven you mad. Well, mad enough to fall in love with me. 
excuse me if I seem cynical or harsh, but when one speaks of your hard-hearted father, one cannot speak any other way. Soon I hope to find my parents living, and when I do, which must be any day now, their consent is easily obtained. Oh, every day I hope of news of them. Oh, it must come soon, it must. <coughs> Or I'll be forced to go and seek the truth for myself. Oh, Valet, I beg you, do not leave my sight. Stay here and work on my father's affections. You know it's the only way. I'm trying. Can't you see how hard I'm trying? You see how I'm forced to sympathize with your <coughs> excessive ways? The shameful part I'm forced to play to shape your stubborn father to my ends. Actually, I'm doing really rather well. <laughs> I've learned that the quickest way to win men's hearts is to echo their excesses, pander to their prejudices, humour their obsessions, to applaud, encourage, even to excel in everything they do, however gross. <laughs> you can never go too far or lay it on too thick. Such flattery would make a saint turn fool. No, 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 lard it all on with praise and season it with subservience and he'll swallow anything. I need this man. And so I have learnt to lie and cover my own honesty. But I will not be poisoned by the lies I tell. My heart is true and so the lies are true as well. And wickedness, if wickedness there be, <coughs> is rather with your father than with me. With the flatterer, not the flattery. You are sweet. You must be careful. A servant might betray us. You must try to win my brother over. Both at once? <laughs> Their personalities are so different and so complex. I cannot possibly win the father and the brother. In winning one, I might lose the other. No, you must do it. And I will show you how you must invoke the bonds of blood and nature's laws and thus recruit your brother to our cause. I must go. <coughs> But Elise, do not tell him all of our hopes and fears, but feed our story piecemeal in his ears, <laughs> as a bird would feed its young. I mean, let discretion rule your tongue. Of course, Valère. Farewell. I don't know that I have the strength to tell him anything at all. Sister, thank heavens I have found you alone. I'm desperate to speak to you. I must share my secret with you. Play on, my darling brother. Come, I'm all ears. What is it you have to tell me? A thousand things, at least a thousand things, distilled in four small words. I am in love! You are in love? In love, yes. I'll tell you everything. But before I do, I know I'm completely dependent on my father. That I am his son and must obey his wishes. And I know it's foolish to follow the dictates of our hearts without sanction of those who gave us birth. I know all this. And I know that heaven has granted them chantelaine to our young lives. They hold the keys, the reins, the purse strings. And since they are not blinded by burning love as we are, their heads are therefore clearer and less prone to rashness or to error. And I know it's wiser to follow the clear beacon of their common sense than the the igni fatu of our own passion, which could so easily lure us into danger. I know all this, I know it well. I'm only saying it to save you the trouble. So do not try and use any of those arguments to dissuade me. I simply will not hear you. Clote, are you betrothed to the one you love? Not yet, no, but I mean to be. And yet I beseech you not to try and talk me out of it. I would not be so perverse. Yes, but you do not love. You do not know the sweet, soft force which lacerates our hearts. No, you are wise, you are reasonable. <laughs> do not talk of my wisdom or my reason. We all lose one or another sooner or later. And brother, who knows? If you look into my heart, perhaps I'm not as wise as you suppose. Oh, sister, sister, can it be? Do you also love? Do you feel the same as me? First, let me hear your story. This girl you love, who is she? Well, she's young. Moved round here not long ago. And sister, every inch, every part of her seems 
contrive to inspire hopeless adoration in all those that lay eyes on her. From the moment I saw her, I was transported, transfigured. Her name's Marianne. She lives under the guardianship of her mother. A goodly woman was, alas, not in the best of health. And my little angel ministers to her every need with such simple tenderness, it would break your heart to see it. All her actions are tinged with such grace, such sweet simplicity, such maidenly modesty. Oh, sister, I just wish you could see her. I feel I do, for she lives in your words. <laughs> My brother's love for her is praise enough. <coughs> Thank you, sister. By the way, I've heard she's not that well off, and uh, the little they have, even when scarcely husbanded, is scarcely enough to maintain their modest way of life. Imagine how delightful it would be to improve the lot of the one you loved. To somehow undermine the meagre expenses of that deserving household. And then you can imagine my despair. My father's meanness grips me like a vice and leaves me unable to enjoy this or any other satisfaction. Oh, my poor brother, you're so unhappy. More than you can tell, for what is more savage than this yoke of thrift he forces upon us? To turn our youth into some barren desert. What is the point in wealth if you can't enjoy it in your prime? To maintain myself in any style at all, I'm forced to beg and borrow, trafficking around with merchants and moneylenders. And that's the point. That's what I'm trying to say. Will you sound my father out? Hint to him what I've hinted to you. And if he still resolved to cross us, then by heavens, she and I will find our happiness elsewhere. Meanwhile, I need to borrow money. I'm following up various leads. If I can just raise enough to run away on. And then, my dear Elise, if, as I divine, your circumstances are similar to mine, and if he thwarts our ambitions, then we can run away together and escape his tyranny forever. Oh, Cleont, if only our mother were here. She could. Why are you here, my That's his voice. Oh, Let's withdraw and hear each other's sorry tale, then we can uh, pool our resources and fight him together. Out of my house! Oh. Get out this instant! Don't you answer back? Go on, get out, you lying, thieving, sniveling little toad. And on my heart, I swear he's the nastiest, stingiest old bugger that ever drew breath. He may well be the devil incarnate. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. What are you mumbling about? Nothing, sir. Nothing but, sir, why you throw me out. How dare you? You know full well. You want to know why I want you out of the house? Because if you don't get out, I'll knock your head off, that's why. What have I done? Enough for me to want you out of here. But, sir, your son, my master, ordered me to wait for him here. Well, wait out in the street, then. <coughs> what you're up to? Loitering around my house, prying, spying, sniffing around, rummaging about, taking notes, seeing if there's anything to steal. <laughs> How am I expecting to steal anything? What's to steal? The whole house is under lock and key, day and night with you standing guard. <laughs> I'll lock what I wish and I'll stand guard if it suits me. How else can I see what's going on? Oh God, I hope she hasn't guessed about my money. And uh, now, you seem the sort to spread rumours, like that I've got money hidden away or something. Oh, have you got money hidden away? No, no, no. No, 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 no. I, I'm just saying you seem the, <coughs> the sort of horrible worm to put rumours like that about. It's all the same to us, what you've got or what you haven't got. We never see a sign of either. Oh, you want an argument, do we? will feel the force of this. Oh, you're not worth it. Go on, get out and stay out. Right then. I'll be going, shall I? Yes, and good riddance. Oh, no, no, wait. Have you, uh, taken anything? What's to take? Come on, show me your hands. Here you are. And the other pair. Oh, you mean these? Yes, no, 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 no. What have you got hidden in, in, in there? Why don't you take a look? <sighs> oh! <laughs> Oh, these new baggy dresses could have been made for thieves. All these, uh, all these furry bits and hidden crevices. Pickpocket paradise. Man who made them to be strung up by them. What he's most afraid of is what he most deserves. I'd love to be able to steal from him. What's that? What's what? 
What's that you saying? Something about stealing? Oh, I said you better search me, see if I've been stealing anything. Well, that's what I'm doing. Pox on all misers and their meanness. What's that? What did you say? I said a pox on all misers and their meanness. And who are they? I mean misers. Yes, but who are they? You know, I mean tight-fisted, mean, stingy bastards. But when you, when you say mean, <gasps> who do you mean? Well, I mean misers. Do you think I mean you? Oh, never mind what I think. No, 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 when you were saying just then, uh, whom were you addressing? I was addressing my hat. I shall address your skull in a minute. Well, so I'm not allowed to curse misers now. No, you're not allowed to answer back, so shut your I hat. didn't name names. One more word, I shall thrash you. If the cat fits. <laughs> will you shut up? Yes, I will. And a protest. Look, another pocket. I think we've got to search this one. Well, come on then. Don't let me do it. Hand it over. And what over? Whatever it is you've taken. I've taken absolutely nothing. I'm sure. I'm sure. <coughs> then bugger off then and may you rot in hell. Charming. I just hope you can live with your conscience. <sighs> Hang her. Hang the bitch. Always hanging around. Sniffing around like a mangy dog after my money. Where's he hidden it? Where can I hide it? How can anyone hide it? How can anyone find somewhere to put it? I mean, where do you put it? Uh, uh, a, a safety box? No, not safe enough. A safe itself? No, not safe. No. First place they look, uh, Burglars, you might as well invite them round. Over there, help yourself. But the garden, <laughs> it's hidden in the garden, buried in the garden. Is that wise? It came in yesterday, 10,000 gold pieces, 10,000 gold pieces buried in the garden. Oh God, oh God, did I mention the garden? <laughs> what did I say? I give myself away. Did they hear? Oh, they're bound to have done. Got to be careful, got to be careful. Uh, uh, what is it? N nothing, Father. Uh, have you been there long? We've only just arrived. Uh, right, did you hear anything? What sort of thing, Father? Well, well you know, uh, that. Uh, what? Well, what I was saying. No. I bet you did. No, I promise we didn't. No, I can see you caught the tail end of it. <laughs> the, the bit about, well, um, how hard it is these days to, to come by money, and, uh, and how happy a man would be who had, say, 10,000 gold pieces to his name. We didn't talk to you straight away because we didn't want to disturb you, Father. No, 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 I'm just explaining. In, in case you got the wrong end of the stick, in case, in case you were thinking <coughs> that I've got 10,000 gold pieces. Oh, no, no, we didn't God think... God knows I could do with 10,000 gold pieces. <laughs> no, we were just... If only, I mean, chance would be a fine thing. I just wanted Nothing would be more welcome, I mean... Times being what they are, 10,000 would help me out knowing. Look, you've got little enough to complain about. We all know you're well off. Well off? Well off? Who told you that they're lying through their teeth? That's a, that's, <coughs> and slander, that is. Evil gossip, filthy lies. You see, you see the rumours people put about. Why are you so angry? Oh, there you go. This, this is where your children turn against you, become your enemies. How does saying you're well off make me your enemy? You are well off. Yeah, there you go, you see? That sort of talk, that and your ludicrous extravagance will be the death of me. Some, some intruder, uh, without knowing, but probably by you, I should think, uh, will be round here to cut my throat and it'll be all your fault. What do you mean, my extravagance? <laughs> Just look at yourself, will you? Swanning about like a grain of fat peacock. I mean, that outfit can't have come cheap. I, your daughter's bad enough, but uh, you, you're even worse. It's, it's offensive to heaven. What you wear on your back, a thrifty family could live on for a year. Oh dear, I, I told you once, I told you a hundred times. You're a wastrel and a spendthrift. Oh, and you and your airs and graces well above your station. That and the way you dress, it's obvious. You're robbing me. How on earth could I be robbing you? Well, how on earth should I know? You tell me. How else could you afford it? 
Very well. I'll tell you the truth. It's simple enough. I gamble for money, and when I'm in luck, I wear my winnings. That's <coughs> obscene. If you do, if you gamble, and if you win, you should bank it at a, a reasonable rate for, for a rainy day. For God's sake, where's the, where's the profit in, in, in swanning around, dripping in ribbons and, and bows like some puffed out Nancy boy? Aren't half a dozen buttons of bows enough to keep your trousers up? And, and what's the point in spending good money on, on wigs and, and powder when you've got a perfectly good head of hair of your own? Now, look. Look, you must have, a, you must have at least 20 Louis d'Or in ribbons and wigs alone there. I mean, at, at 8% that could bring you, um, what, 28 francs, six and a half sous per annum. I'm sure you're right. I bloody know I'm right. But uh, enough of that for now. There's another matter I, I wish to discuss. What, what is all this? They're making secret signs at each other. They're plotting. They want to rob me of my purse. What, what's all this signaling? What's going on? Um, we were just deciding who was going to be the first to speak to you. We both have a very important matter to discuss. Ah, well, I have an important matter to discuss with both of you. We wish to talk to you about marriage, Father. Oh, no, I wish to talk to you about marriage, too. Oh, Father, Father. Oh, Father, Father. What's that supposed to be? <coughs> is, it, is it the word itself that distresses you or, or the whole thing? Well, either or both, depending. You see, we fear that our intentions may not accord with your approval. <laughs> my children, my dear children, do be patient. I know exactly what both of you require, and uh, I think when I tell you my plans, you'll, you'll have no cause for concern. Right, I'll be brief. Now, tell me, have you heard of a, a certain charming young person, name of Marianne, who lives in this vicinity? Yes, Father, I have. You too? Yes, I've heard speak of her. And, and, and my son, what is your opinion of her? A delightful person. Her face? Quite admirable. Uh, her manner, her appearance? Quite admirable. And, and do you think uh, she deserves the estate <coughs> which the world appears to hold her? I would decidedly, unreservedly. Therefore, a suitable match. Or eminently suitable. And, and, and do you think she could run a household? Oh, impeccably. And uh, do you think her husband would find, um, how shall I put this, satisfaction with her? Oh, he would, he would. Oh. Good. Uh, but uh, there is one slight problem. I. I fear she may not be as wealthy as, as we uh, would hope. But father, what is wealth compared to the joys of marriage to a sweet young person? What? Oh, no, yes, yeah, yeah, you may have a point. Uh, certainly what she lacks in wealth, she may well make up for uh, in other departments. I agree and entirely, I, yes. I'm glad you agree, and so entirely, because her, her sweet and modest nature has, has quite won my heart, and uh, so and I am resolved, well, as long as she doesn't turn up completely empty-handed, uh, to marry her forthwith. Uh, pardon? Well, to, 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 to marry, to ma ma marry Marianne. Your resolve to... To, to marry Marianne. You, what? Just you. me, is there anything? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel dizzy. I think I'm going to faint. I'd better sit down for a oh, moment. For God's sake. Go, go to the kitchen. Pour yourself out a nice big draught of, of tap water. <laughs> for God's sake, I, I've seen more stamina in a dead chicken. <laughs> Well, one daughter was bad enough. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Oh, yes, marriage. Yes, sir. So those are my intentions. As for your brother, well, I found this widow for him. <laughs> I only heard about it this morning. Uh, that should be about right for him. As for yourself, you will marry Signor Anselm. Signor Anselm? Yes, yes, yes. Good man, good man. Of riper years, of course, and uh, therefore wise and and cautious, and not a day over 60, and, uh, I'm told, not of inconsiderable wealth. I, I do not desire to marry, Father, with respect. <laughs> and I, daughter, with respect, do desire you to marry. Uh, but with your permission, Father, uh, With I'm your like... permission, daughter, or indeed without it. I am Signor Anselm's most humble servant, I will not be his wife. <laughs> I am your most humble servant, and you will marry him, and you will marry him this evening. This evening? Yes, this evening. No. Yes. No, I tell you. 
Yes, I tell you. You cannot force me to do it. Oh, but daughter, I can. I'd rather kill myself than marry oh, such a man. You will not kill yourself. Uh, you will marry him. I, has a daughter ever shown her father such ingratitude? <laughs> has a father ever shown a daughter such a gloomy prospect? Uh, there's no more to discuss. Marry him, you will, and this evening. I promise you the world will approve of my choice. And I promise you no one in their right mind will ever approve of your choice. Oh, look, he's, he's Valer, a man of honour and sense. Uh, we will hear his impartial judgement. Yes, willingly. And you will stand by his decision? I will do whatever he says. And quite right, too. Now, Valer, come here. <clears throat> now, we need your guidance. I, I want you to tell me who's right, me or my daughter? Oh, you are, sir. Yes, yes, without a doubt. Have you the remotest idea what we're talking about? Not at all, sir. But since you can hardly be in the wrong, you must therefore be completely in the right. <laughs> yeah, well, this evening I, I intend to marry off my daughter to a man who is rich, who is wise, who is noble, and uh, this <coughs> minx has the nerve to, to tell me, and to my face, that she'll have none of it. What do you make of that? <laughs> what do I make of that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, you... Yes, you, you've got the... Come on, come on. <laughs> Fundamentally, of course, sir. You are in the right, as of course. <laughs> How could you not be? <clears throat> However, it occurs to me that she is not entirely in the wrong. What do you mean, on selling as a man of considerable standing and wealth? Birth, breeding, wealth? Mm. Of uh, good nature, of charm and, and wealth? And, uh, and not only that, <sighs> No children from his first marriage. Ha! They all died! <laughs> what more could you want? <laughs> well, indeed. <laughs> Your daughter may feel unwilling to rush headlong into such a match. They may not be compatible, who knows? Oh, what do you mean? Um, we've got to act now. We must strike now or lose the chance forever. And there is another circumstance that makes his offer irresistible. He is willing to take her as she stands, and more to the point, Demands no dowry. <laughs> no dowry, sir. Not a penny. <laughs> yes. Well, that rather changes everything, doesn't well, it? Well, so it can't represents, really argue with that. represents a considerable <laughs> saving to myself. Well, of course, as it would, sir. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> However, your daughter might feel that marriage is a mighty big step and not one to be taken lightly. That a lifetime's happiness or, or sorrow hangs in the balance. To the death was part, you know, sir, for richer or for poorer? No dowry! <laughs> yes, sir, no dowry. Absolutely right. That's the end of the argument. <laughs> Except there are those that might say that there are situations where the daughter's feelings should be taken into account. They might say, and they might have a point, <coughs> that such a vast discrepancy of, of age and temperament might create such an insurmountable rift that their hopes of happiness may flounder, sir. No dowry! <laughs> yes! Yes, and no argument to that, sir. However, however, there are fathers who, and I'm not saying that they're right, might, might sacrifice common interest to common decency and assume that a marriage bond would yield the appropriate returns of contentment, of comfort, happiness. And mutual. No dowry, <laughs> sir! No dowry, sir! How could anybody possibly argue with that? Uh, oh, hang on, heard a dog barking. Uh, somebody's trying to steal my money. I'd... Wait there, I'll be back. Oh! Hansler, agreeing with him like that? I didn't want to provoke him. You'll see it'll turn out better in the end. If I'd argued with him, it would have ruined everything. There are some men who must be led, not driven. Certain minds so stubborn and perverse that the sudden shock of truth would knock them from the road of reason and must therefore be cajoled, coaxed and wheedled on their way. He's one of them. Just accede to his demands and you'll see it will turn out better in the end. What about this marriage? We'll find some pretext for breaking it off. But what, Valère, and before tonight? Some delaying tactic. I know. You must tell him that you are ill. Well, they'll only find me out. They'll call a doctor. So much the better. What do doctors know? They'll just come up with a few symptoms, the beastlier the better, and they'll be in heaven inventing diseases to match. You'll be the talk of the academy. Oh. 
It will be the subject of learned dissertation. Thank God nothing's been taken. <laughs> if all else fails, then our last, so our last option is flight. And if your heart is strong enough, then you, then you will listen to his demands, accept his choice, and obey his every command. How dare you ask for details? That is merely rude, is that not right, sir? <laughs> Especially when there is no dowry. You should be happy with what you get, sir. Oh, good, Valère. Well spoken. Nicely put. Thank you very much, sir. Now, <clears throat> you don't mind if I would scold her for a bit, sir? On the contrary. No, no. I, I, I give you absolute uh, sway and power over my daughter. I, I hereby pass her over to you. Thank and you, uh, you. If you make any suggestions, you act on them immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Else you try and disobey me now. <laughs> <clears throat> sir, with your permission, I would like to follow her and continue our teachings in private. Oh, with all my heart. Yes, I mean, if she won't take it from me, I trust she'll take it from you. <laughs> As do I, sir. <clears throat> I'm afraid I may have to be rather strict. Good. Sir. The stricter, the better. I'm sure I'll be able to hammer my point home, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Well, now, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, into her, with my blessing. Now, I, I have to go into town. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, be back in a while. Yes, for what is more important than money? You should thank God on your knees daily for having given you such a sensible father who understands the world. Oh. <coughs> why, if a man asks for you with, remember, no dowry, why even ask of his looks, his age, his honour, his tender, loving heart? Oh, bravo! Spoken like an oracle. Huh? How blessed I am to have such a servant in my house! <laughs> <laughs> Where did you run off to then, you disobedient wench? Didn't I tell you to wait here? Yes, you did. Near our was study waiting. But Monsieur, your father, who is, let's be honest, an horrible man, chased me out of the house. Worse than that, he almost beat me. Anyway, how is our business going? Since I last spoke to you, the urgency's got even greater. I've found out I have a rival in love. My father. <laughs> your father? In love? I know, it was all of the disguise my disgust. My gall rose unbidden. Your father in love? Is he having us on or what? I know it must be God's punishment for my sins. Oh, why didn't you just tell him? No, he can't. No, he'd be jealous. No, but this way I can forestall this grotesque misalliance. So anyway, what did they say? Well, sir, as you know, when you're forced to borrow money, you fall into sorry company. Not nice people, money lenders. Deal with them and you get dirty hands. Quite so, quite so. But look, will I get the money? Well, the agent they recommended, a certain Maitre Simon, seems very enterprising, very thorough, and he's already worked wonders for you. Apparently he likes to look at your face, which helps. Yes, but look, will I get the money? I asked for 15,000 francs. Well, you will get the money, but inevitably there are strings attached. Did you meet the lender face to face? Oh no! No, 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 that's not the way these things are done. Anyway, he's even more secretive than you are. No, the whole <coughs> business is shrouded in mystery. For instance, you mustn't know his name. We're meant to meet today in a safe house, so he may ask you certain questions about your family and your fortunes and your hopes. But I'm sure your father's name will do the trick. Don't forget the goods my mother left me, they're mine outright. So. Here are the preliminary details that he left to the go-between to be read by you before we proceed any further. <coughs> if the lender be satisfied with his sureties and if the borrower be of age and of sound mind and of good family, of means and free of any debt or other obligation, a precisely worded bond should be drawn up before the representative of the law is upright, decent and respected as may be found who will be chosen by the lender for it is more in the lender's interest that the contract should be properly worded. Seems fair enough. The lender, not wishing to be burdened by the slightest grain of conscience, will lend his money at the rate of interest of five and a half percent. Five and a half percent? God, that's actually quite decent. Jolly good, can't complain there. No, indeed. But, um... <clears throat> since the 
aforementioned lender is not in direct possession of the sum in question, he is in deference to the aforementioned borrower, constrained to himself borrow such a sum from a third party at a rate of interest of 20%, which interest will be undertaken by the original borrower without prejudice to the original interest in consideration of the fact that the lender is obliged to become a borrower himself to oblige the original borrower. <laughs> what? The blood-sucking bastard! He's a Jew, he's an Arab, he's both, that's what... 25% interest more! Oh, I did warn you there were strings attached! Perhaps you better mull it over. What's to mull? He has the money, I need the money. What can I do but accept? Well, that's what I told him. Is there anything else? Um, <clears throat> just uh, a little addendum. <laughs> 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 thousand francs in question, the borrower will only receive 12,000 in cash and coin. The remaining sum will be received in the form of goods to that value, see inventory attached, which the lender has valued in good faith and at a most advantageous rate. Advantageous to whom? What does he mean? See inventory attached. Item, a four-poster bed hung with an indeterminate fabric of an attractive olive hue, tastefully trimmed with Hungarian lace, together with six chairs and a quilt similarly decorated, all in good condition, lined with red and blue shop taffeta. Item, an attractive cot or palanquin, shaped like a tent and sumptuously hung with a plain pink serge, pleated, fringed and tasseled with silk. What am I to do with... Item, a tapestry, slightly fox, representing the amorous adventures of Gombo and Messiah. <laughs> Item, a large dining table carved in walnut or similar, with twelve ornately carved legs, three of which are missing. This handsome item is <laughs> both ends and comes complete with six matching chairs, four of which at least can take a man of average weight. What am I to do with Patience, that? Patience, sir. Item, three large fowling pieces, complete with gum rests, one with mother of pearl chasing around his butt, two without. This is too Item, a bagatelle board, a draft board, and the game called Goose, as popularised by the Greeks. All excellent notions for hobby or pastime activity. Item, a rather spectacular stuffed lizard, standing all of three and a half feet from the ground, particularly suitable for suspending from the ceiling as a conversation piece. All of the above items are generously valued over over £4,500, which at the lender's discretion is to be rounded off to 1000 Louis d'Or. A pox on his discretion and his items and his stuffed lizard. He outuses usury. Not content with setting a criminal rate of interest, he wishes to palm me off with his moth-eaten old tat into the bargain. But what can I do, eh? My hands are tied, his knife is my throat. What can I do but accept? If you'll excuse a literary reference, sir, you seem set on the same road to ruin as Monsieur Panage, by which I mean living ahead of your means, buying dear, selling cheap, not only counting your chickens before they've hatched, but cooking and eating them as well. <laughs> but what can I do? I am still young and my father is a miser. That's that. No way out. Are you surprised that children long for their parents to die? Your father would incite St Francis of Assisi to murder. <laughs> I'm not a member of the criminal fraternity myself, I thank God. And when I see my friends mixed up in monkey business of that sort, I tend to disassociate myself swiftish. But... But if ever I've had wicked thoughts of that sort, they've always been directed towards your father. And yes, I'll say it outright. Whoever robs him of his money would be performing a public service. Give me that list. I want another look. Yes, yes, Your Honour. The man is young, needs money most urgently. So much so that I'm sure he'll agree to your very <clears throat> reasonable terms. But, but is he a good risk? Is he a, a sound investment? I mean, what do we know about his family, his fortunes? Well, his father. <sighs> Oh, well, there, alas, I cannot help. Uh, it was only by chance, you see, that he was referred to me. But the man himself, when you meet him, will certainly assuage all your misgivings. Uh, his servant has assured me that when you see him, you will recognize him at once for the sort of man he is. And his family is extremely rich, and his mother is no longer with us. And if you wish to insist on it, he will guarantee his father's demise sometime within the next eight to nine months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to hear it. I mean, it is common charity to help our neighbours, is it not? Oh, and how very right you are. Oh, no. This our agent, Major Simon, for some reason, he's talking to your father. Has someone told my father? Has someone betrayed us? Was it you? Oh, 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 good day, sir. Good day. 
Well, you've, um, you've rather jumped the gun, if I may say so. Look, I promise you, monsieur, I didn't divulge your name or your address. And yet here we all are! <laughs> but no harm done. We can proceed. These persons are discreet. And, well, I think we might start. Now, <clears throat> what? Uh, monsieur, may I have the uh, pleasure of introducing the borrower? He wants to borrow the money. <laughs> the money we discussed, the 15,000 francs. <laughs> what, you, you painted fop? Is this what your mad extravagance has brought you to? What, you? Is this what the, the shocking state of affairs your meanness has brought you so, to? So you're the fool who wishes to ruin himself, borrowing a 25% disgrace <laughs> So you're the crook who wishes to enrich himself by criminal usury, 25% Disgraceful! I don't know how you can face your father! I don't know how you can face the world! But aren't you ashamed of your subject? Your father sweats and slaves for minimal reward, and, and, and you just throw it all away on, on, on loose living and debauchery! But aren't you ashamed of yourself, your position, your reputation, all sacrificed on the altar of greed? You'd sell your own children if the terms were right! Oh, who would have you? Out of my sight, you're no son of mine. So, who's the greater criminal, eh? He who borrows when he is in need, or he who steals money he doesn't need? Blasphemy! Blasphemy! Wash your mouth out, or go and spout your filth elsewhere! No, I'm, I'm glad of this sorry episode. Now, now I know the truth. I know to keep an eye on you in the future. Oh, oh yes, you know, we will still. speak presently. Uh, I, I must go and have a word with my money. Oh, it's all very odd. I don't remember seeing all that stuff. He must be keeping a rag and bone shop on the sly. Why, it's you, Lovelash, my poor dear friend. What are you doing here? Ah, Rosine. What are you doing here? What are you up to? Oh, the usual. You know me. Helping people out, mucking in, making myself <laughs> useful, oiling the odd wheel. <laughs> God has only granted me but slender talents, but a, a head for business. A little intrigue and a lot of industry does the rest. <laughs> You've not got deals with the master of the ass, have you? Uh, well, yes, you know I might be able to do a little something for him. Only as a go-between, you understand. And, of course, hoping for a little something in return. <laughs> It'll be so little, you might easily confuse it with precisely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. There are certain services that always soften the human heart and loosen the purse strings. Mm, that may be, but you don't know Monsieur Harpagan. Human is humanity's least human human. You could save his life 20 times a day and he give you nothing for it. Nothing could prize his hands apart. He's as generous as a dead clam. <laughs> oh, you could praise him, lard him with kindness, baste him with flattery, but you'll get no recompense for it. Oh, he'll smile and he'll nod, but his very nature is as dry as a sun-bleached skull. <sighs> and he'll give you nothing. Give is a word that doesn't feature in his vocabulary. It's never, I give you a good day. More like, I'll lend you a good day at 25% interest. Oh, good. I love a challenge and I know I'm equal to it. If you tickle a man's heart in precisely the right spot, it springs open of its own accord. <laughs> to reveal an empty shell. I defy you to soften this man's heart where money's concerned. No, you could set yourself on fire at his feet and he wouldn't notice. He's stingier than Satan. Meaner than a hyena, tighter than a gnat's chuff. Ooh. He can sniff out a scrounger a hundred Ooh. paces, and the thought of parting with anything wraps him with cramps, brings him out in hives, makes his entrails boil and bubble, <coughs> quivers up his old fur, tries to stuff up and even coming on the go. Oh, everything's fine. Oh, Frisine, how's it all going? My, but your lordship's looking well. The picture of lusty good health. 
<laughs> yes, I've never seen your reverend looking so fresh, so gamesome, so dare I say frisky. Are you all right? No, truly, I've never seen you looking so young. I, I've seen men of 25 who look younger than you do. Oh, I'm much obliged for a scene, but I, I shan't see 60 again. 60? <laughs> What's that? You're in your prime, the flower of middle age. Oh, well, yes, but losing 20 years wouldn't do me any harm. Now, now, must be fish for compliments, you know. I speak as I find, you know me, and I'm not going to resort to flattery. No, you'll live to be a hundred at least. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> oh, yes, you've got all the signs. Oh, oh, sit still a moment. Oh, look there, right between the eyes. A sure sign of a long life. <laughs> oh, if you know about these things. Oh, I should say so. Give me your hand. Oh, God bless my soul. What an enormous lifeline! <laughs> Look, it goes up here, round here, and all the way there, and all the way back again. Oh, yes. and what does that oh, signify? It's almost bigger than your hands. Oh. I, I don't want to alarm you, sir, but uh, we said a hundred, a six score is nearer the mark. Ah, it can't be possible. No, a dozen young men with clubs will have to cuddle you to death. You're unstoppable. You'll live to bury your children and your children's children. Well, I should look forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell me, how's our business proceeding? Oh, need you ask? Have you ever known me to be anything but assiduous? Marriages are my speciality. <clears throat> I don't think there's a couple, however ill-matched or unsuited, is not open to my persuasion. I think if I took it into my head to marry Lucretia Porter to the Pope, I'd manage it. <laughs> so this particular case presents no problems whatsoever. I'm, I'm an intimate with both families. And I told the mother of the fancy you developed for Marianne when you saw her walking in the street and how your affection seemed to grow and consolidate when you saw glimpsed her in the window. Oh, uh -huh. and how did she react? Oh, she could not disguise her delight. No, and when I told her about your daughter's wedding and how you wanted Marianne to be present at the camp contract, she was only too pleased to leave you in my hands. But, uh, I'm, I'm obliged to give supper tonight to Signor Ansel. I, I, I should invite Maria to join oh, us. Oh, very wise and generous. Then she can come and have dinner and go out with your daughter and, and get to know one another a bit, you know. And then we can visit the pleasure gardens together and be home in time for supper. Oh, good. good. I, I, I'll lend them my carriage for you. Oh, that will be excellent, my lord. Uh, now, now, Frisine, um, <laughs> did, you, did you speak to the mother and find out what sort of dowry she could... Uh, could muster up. I mean, I, I, I can't have her turning up completely empty-handed. I, I hope you told her she should look high and low, sell whatever she can, <laughs> let a little blood, you know, in order to, to come up with a sum, you know, for such an auspicious occasion. I, I mean, a wedding is no time for parsimony. God knows. I don't know what you mean, my lord. This girl will bring in, oh, at least 12,000 a year. 12,000 a year? Oh, why, yes, listen, just listen to me. Firstly, she's a girl who's been brought up thriftily. She eats like a bird. So, you know, a squat of salad, bit of old cheese here, half an apple, that's all she'll want. None of your groaning boards oh. or your nine-course meals or expensive sweetmeats for her. Oh, no. So, that'll bring you in at least 3,000 a year on food alone. And there's more. She's a girl of sober demeanour and chaste habits. She cannot abide anything as gaudy, like gaudy clothes, unlike so many young flippity gibbets of her age, or, you know, vulgar and gaudy as jewellery. She can't stand it. No, no, no. So you'll have a saving of ooh, at least 4,000 a year on clothes and jewels alone. And that's not all. The one thing she hates above all else, and this is rare in the younger generation, is gambling. Oh. Cards, dice, not for her. I know one girl lives round here, loses 20,000 a year oh. on gambling alone. <laughs> anyway, 
if we divided that by four, that's say five thousand a year on on gambling. So, oh, what have we got? We've got four thousand on clothes and jewels, uh, five thousand on gambling, and what did we say? A thousand Louis d'Or on food. There you are, twelve thousand a year, and you haven't even had to lift a finger. Oh, uh, but uh, that's uh, all very well. But I, I shan't see a penny. It's an imaginary uh, sum. Imaginary? Is sobriety of dress and demeanour imaginary? Is a hatred of gambling imaginary? I think not. That's it. You can't just add up all the money she hasn't spent and call it a dowry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. I, I can't write a receipt for something I, I've never received. No, I want something I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, believe me, sir, you'll have plenty you can get your hands on soon. <laughs> and it seems they've got money abroad, so you can add that to the grand total. We'll have to look into that, but uh, mm. seeing that there is something that worries me. I, I have this tiny, tiny little fear. Oh, tiny little fear. That's, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Tiny, oh, you didn't. Oh, oh no, 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 no. It's a, <laughs> anyway, <coughs> as, as you know, the girl is young, and uh, the young tend to, to prefer their company, if not the love, of people of their own age. So I fear, you know, a man of my years may not be to her taste, and that the. The consequences could be, well, embarrassing and distressing for me. Oh, oh, my Lord, you plainly do not know her. She has this, this, um, oh, I forgot to tell you about it. This, this aversion, yes, that's right, this allergy, this absolute particular quirk of hers. She cannot abide young people. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes, she really <laughs> could only truly love an older man. Well, really? Yes. Yeah. Yes, really, you should hear her on the subject. She can't abide the sight of a young lad. No, no, she prefers someone of handsome man of riper years, preferably with a beard. <laughs> so don't go dressing younger than your age, no. Sixty's her bottom limit, I tell you. Oh. Yeah, do you know, just recently, she was going to get married, and imagine, she broke it off. Yes, he was signing a contract and he wasn't even wearing spectacles. And then she saw that he was only 56 and that was that. <laughs> she broke it off. She did indeed. 56, she said, where's the fun in that? And, and to show the world a naked nose without any spectacles. Disgusting. Well, I've never heard the like. No, and that's not all. <clears throat> She's got portraits hanging in her bedroom. And what of? Apollo, Paris, <coughs> any of those guys, you know? <laughs> no, no, not a bit of it. King Priam, <laughs> oh, Lester, <laughs> Achilles on his son's shoulder. <laughs> That's amazing and admirable. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm amazed and delighted. But of course she's right. I, I don't know how women could give young men the time of day. Oh, I, I wouldn't. No, I know. What do you mean? I mean, those women must be mad chasing after snotty nose kids. Well, exactly. What's in it for them? Exactly, exactly, exactly mm. what I say. But, but the, yet there are women who prefer younger men. Mm, so I'm told, but how? How strange. I, they're not men, they're animals, they're brutes. Well, exactly what I say. Yeah. I, skin like chicken braids. Oh, no. chicken. Wispy little oh, ears, fluffy oh, little oh, wings, oh, reaches round their ankles, oh, and, yes. and those silly little babies. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what are they compared to you? Now that's what I call a man. Everything in its place. Not a bone, not a garment, not a hair out of place. Who could not gaze on you? not be fascinated. You approve? Approve? You're joking! You're a picture! <laughs> Turn around, sir. Ah, walk up and down a little for me. Ah, oh, what a body! Free! Easy! Everything in its place! And not a hint of infirmity! No, 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 no infirmity! No, I, I thank God! Well, hardly any. I, I, I do get the odd bout of heavy catar. Qatar? <clears throat> What's that? She'll enjoy your Qatar. What could be more becoming than a flimmy cough? 
<laughs> tell me, Mary, uh, but tell me, uh, for a second, uh, uh, has she seen me, Mary? You know, walking in the street or? No, but uh, we've discussed you at great length. And I painted your portrait, as it were, and she almost swooned. <laughs> oh, oh. I made great play of all your considerable assets and all the wonderful <laughs> things she would get by marrying you. And the girl was just so excited. Oh, you've done well for me, and you, you've done very well. My lord. Oh. And there is one small thing. I'd like to ask you, my lord. I, I, I'm on the point of losing a lawsuit, losing oh, it through uh, lack of money, my lord. And just a small amount from yeah, you would uh, just make all the difference. Uh, oh, but you've no idea how she's looking forward to you. Oh, yeah. oh she'll dote on you when she sees you, when she sees that old fashioned rat hanging there at her <coughs> neck. She'll faint. Oh, and when she sees those breeches buttoned up to your doublet like that, you'll go mad. <laughs> Every girl's dream! And look at those big buttons to have a lover with big buttons like that! Oh. Oh. oh, this is good to hear. Yes. Yes, but about that lawsuit, it really oh, no. has been considerable importance to me because I stand to be ruined if I... Oh, oh you should have seen her lovely face! Her beautiful eyes opening wider and wider the more we talked about you. I mean, by the end, she was truly champing at the bit, impatient for this marriage to be done as quickly as possible. Oh, that did, Frazina, I, I am considerably indebted to you. Quite. And if you do for me what I ask oh. you, my finances and my, my efforts would be renewed, and I would be a truly indebted yeah, but to I, you. I must go and catch up on my uh, correspondence. Uh, uh, oh, please, do not... And I do not listen. Please listen to my entreaties. Do not refuse my entreaties. Yes. Look, I'll make sure the carriage is ready for you to go to the pleasure oh, garden. Oh, no and idea how I would ask and you. I'll make dream. sure we eat early. We, we don't want to get indigestion, do we? I promise this is the only charity oh, no, I've ever asked. No, we, we'll you. speak later, Frizzy. Somebody's calling if for me. I must know. Her face, the pleasure. <laughs> The miserly old, crafty old dog. I hope you drown in your own catar, you <laughs> crabby old bugger. How can I prize him apart? Hmm. But I'm not going to give up. And there's always the other party. <laughs> They're sure to be giving me something for my pain. <laughs> you're doing. Uh, right, who should we start with? Uh, yeah, you, La Marouche. Uh, I want you to clean my house from top to bottom, but don't uh, don't polish the furniture too hard. We don't want to wear it away. <laughs> <laughs> that done, now, uh, tonight's supper, you will be in charge of the bottles. But if any get broken or any go missing, it's your responsibility and it will be docked from your pay. Yeah, a wise precaution to be sure. No, go to it, go to it. No, now, Brindavine, well, and you, Malouche, uh, you'll be in charge of uh, washing the goblets and uh, pouring the drinks, but uh, only if they're thirsty. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't go hanging around like uh, insolent servants putting ideas in their heads. <laughs> no, 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 keep your distance. Uh, uh, wait till they ask you, and then ignore them. <laughs> but if they do persist, well, pour if you have to, but don't forget, lots of water with it. Water. No, no, very true. Undiluted wine goes straight to your head. Um, shall we take off our old overalls? Well, just wait until the guests arrive, uh, and uh, try not to stain your uniform. But do you know, sir, don't you, my jacket's still suffering from that accident I had with the oil lamp. Oh, and me, sir, there's a 
great rip in my skirt and well, I'm worried, um, saving your grace, that people are going to see more. You better don't stand with your back to the wall, nobody will see anything. <laughs> no, no, no. And you keep your hat there uh, while you're uh, serving at supper. Now, uh, now daughter, <clears throat> you will be in charge of the leftovers. I, I want nothing edible thrown away. That's, uh, that's a good job for a girl. And then uh, when you've done that, you can get yourself ready to meet my fiance because you're going to take her off to the pleasure. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I am, Father, yes. <laughs> well, that's for you, you great Nelly. I seem fit to forgive you for that earlier <laughs> unpleasantness, so uh, don't go making faces at my fiance. Making faces? Uh, wh why should I? Well, come on, we all know what, uh, what it's like, children and their stepmothers, uh, and they like to make each other's lives a misery, so if you do want me to forget that unpleasantness, you'll be so kind as to smile, 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 be attentive, and try and make her feel welcome. I do have to admit, I have mixed feelings about her becoming my stepmother, mm. but as for being welcoming and attentive, well, I'll do my best. Well, see what you can do. I know it will be hard, but uh, Valère, uh, <coughs> keep your eye on him. Yes. Now, Maitre Jacques, I've left you till last. Come here. Oh, Valère. <laughs> <coughs> Maitre Jacques, mm. I wish to speak to you. Mm. Well, are you addressing me as coachman or as cook? Are those serving both capacities? Well, it's as both. Fine, but which first? <laughs> no. Cook. Right. What? What's all this? <laughs> Ready to receive orders. Right, well, I've invited some people over for supper this evening. Well, that's a first. Now, can you give us a decent meal? Yeah, if you can give me some decent money. Oh, yeah. money! <laughs> money! That's, that's the only word they ever say to me. Money, money, money. The only word on their lips. Money, money, money. They're obsessed. I've never heard of such impertinence in all my life, sir. Needing a good meal. Needing a lot of money for a good meal, yes. indeed. <laughs> Any fool could do that. No, no, no. The real trick. The real skill is in being able to get a good meal for very little money, yeah. sir. A good meal for very little money? Oh, yes. Well, perhaps you'd like to let us in on that particular secret? Or well, why don't you take my job as cook? No, you, just... you seem to be the boss around here. <laughs> no, shut up. Now, tell me, can it be done? Ask him, it's his idea. No, 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 I want you to tell me. All right, fine. How many guests are there? Well, it will be eight or... Or ten, but, but, but only cater for eight. If there's enough for eight, there, there'll be enough there for ten. That's true. very true. Okay, so we'll start <laughs> with four different soups, five main dishes. Let's see, soups on both sides. Wait, so we're just trying to feed the whole And then out. there's the roast of so pork mutton. And you're eating up all my... Oh, and then there's dessert. No, 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 this is too much. It is indeed. Do you want to stuff them until they burst? Haven't you read of the ill effects of overeating? Don't you know that a surfeit? can endanger people's health. That is absolutely right. Major Jack, you are obviously <coughs> not aware that a full table is a potential threat to life and limb. Excess is an unpardonable insult. And that you must follow this dictum. Eat to live. Do not live to eat. Oh, oh, oh I, I love your dictum. It's, it's the best I've ever heard. I, I embrace you for... Well, no, I don't. But, uh, <laughs> what was it again? So it's live to eat. No, no that's not right. Eat to live. Not live to eat. And which great philosopher said this? <laughs> uh, the name escapes me. Uh, never mind, write, write it down. I'll, I'll have it engraved in gold. It'll look good above the mantelpiece. It will be done, sir. And as for supper, please leave it with me. I will organise everything. Ah, it's in your hands. <clears throat> good, that will get mine clean. Now, now, uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to give them something filling so, uh, so they don't overeat. Uh, now, uh, beans, say, uh, plenty of fat, uh, pie filled with chestnuts and, and oh, and sweet dumplings. Sounds <coughs> delicious. Yes, please, rely on me, sir. Good, good. Now, Maitre Jacques, I shall want you to clean my carriage for me. <coughs> right, we'll be wanting to speak to the coachman then. <coughs> what? Sorry. Right. <laughs> Prepare my horses for a, for a trip down to the pleasure gardens. Prepare your horses? Yes, yes, yes. What for? They're not fit for the knacker's yard. The poor beasts are so starved and neglected, they're hardly horses at all. They're more like ghosts of horses. Oh, shut up. How can 
they be ill? They never do anything. So they do nothing. Must stay there for eat nothing? <sighs> no, they'd be better off working a lot and eating a lot. No, that breaks my heart. I love them like brothers and when I see them starve I think that could be me. <laughs> So I slip him a carrot or two off my plate when I can spare it. I, mean, I sleep next door to them after all, and aren't we taught to love our neighbours? But surely it's not too much work to go to the fair. No, but it's not fair to give them that much work. No. I couldn't lead them. If I gave them a tap on the behind, they'd drop dead in the street. How can they drag a coach? They can't even drag their own carcasses. Monsieur, I'll have Picard next door assist me with the horses and he'll help with dinner too. <coughs> Good. If they must die, I'd rather it wasn't at my hand. Major Jack is full of petty arguments. Yeah, and your new shoe is full of all your compliments. Enough. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but I can't abide a flatterer. Why can't you see what he's doing? His perpetual fussing about the bread, the wine, the salt, the candles. He's just buttering you up. And the only reason his eloquent tongue pleases you so much is that it's halfway up. You'll excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> but damn it, I'm fond of you in spite of everything. In spite of what everyone says, and to be honest, you're... No, no, after those poor horses. You're the creature I'm most fond of on God's earth, so there, I've said it. <laughs> but, but tell me, uh, Major Jack, what, what are people saying about me? Tell me. Only if you promise not to get angry. No, 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 I, I won't get angry. No, come on, tell me. <laughs> I rather think you will, so I won't. But honestly, no. <laughs> you will tell me and I won't get angry. I'd, I'd be only too delighted to hear what people are saying about me. <coughs> Very well. Since you insist, I have to tell you that you're a complete laughing stock. <laughs> There's a hundred stories going around, each more ludicrous than the last. They say you had an almanac printed, suppressing the feast days, doubling the fast days, Lent, apparently lasted four and a half months. <laughs> they say you had your neighbour's cat sent to court for criminal assault on a leg of mutton. Yeah. They say that one night you were caught nicking oats out of your own horse's nose bag and the coachman, my predecessor, gave you a complete thrashing and you had to hush the whole thing up. They say that and lots more. The stories are legion. The whole world knows about you talks about you and pisses itself laughing, calling you a miser, a thief, a moneylender, and a tight-fisted old git. <laughs> <laughs> and I called you yeah. a half-wit, a, 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 a rascal, a blackguard, and a cheeky son. Oh, oh, see, I told you you'd be angry in your world. So much for honesty, Major Jack. That will teach you. Why don't you mind your own bloody business? You come in here with your fancy ways and start lording it over the rest of us. When you get yourself beaten, then you can laugh. Meanwhile, don't laugh at me. No, 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 Metro Jack, please, don't, don't be angry. Oh. Now he's backing down. I'll pretend I'm big and fierce, and if he's fool enough to believe me, so much the better. Right! Laugh at me, would you? Well, I'm not laughing, and you better watch it, or you'll be laughing on the other side of your face. <laughs> hey, calm down. Calm down? I don't feel like calling yeah, that. I beseech you. Damn your impertinence. But Monsieur, uh, Major Jack. Don't you bloody Monsieur Latrish at me. Wait until I get a big stick and I'll knock your smarmy head off. What um, do you mean a big stick? Well, well, when, when I said a big stick, I might have meant a tiny one. You <laughs> snivelling coward. You know I'm quite capable of beating you. Yes, 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 I can see that. Yes. <laughs> don't you know me yet? For what I really am. Well, I'm sorry. Weren't you going to beat me no. just now? <laughs> no, 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 that was just a joke. A joke? <laughs> it's not very funny. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Would you like a joke? No, no. This will split your sides. What? 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 Oh. 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 Oh, well, that'll teach me to tell the truth. <laughs> Doesn't pay honesty. 
The worst policy. Nothing but lies from now on. Oh, that snivelling little steward. It's all right for my master to beat me, are you? But not him, not him. Oh, I'll get my own back. If I can. Beatrice, mm -hmm. oh. 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 is your master present? Yes. And he's made his presence fit. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Go and tell your master that we're here, would you? Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. Oh. Sit here, dear. Frisine, I'm so nervous, so terrified of meeting him today. Oh, my dear, what is there to be worried about? Enough, more than enough. Here I am, condemned to death, sent to embrace the hangman. Monsieur Harbagon, yes, I can think of better ways to die. <laughs> oh, but what a contrast to the young man you've just been telling me about. <laughs> by the fire in your eyes that you are thinking of him even now. Christine, <laughs> what can I say? The kind, respectful visit he paid me has uh, moved me somewhere deep within my soul. And yet you still don't know who he is. No, I have no idea. Mm. All I know that he inspires trust and love, and I know that if the choice was mine, he would be mine, mm. which altogether makes my present prospects all the more worse. God. Now, these young, pretty chaps, they're all very well in their own place and in their own time. But you're far better off to marry an ancient husband, Richard's Croesus. I can see you don't agree with me. Yes, I mean, there will be certain unpleasantness that you might have to put up with. Indeed, but look on the bright side, he can't last long, and soon you'll be a widow, and then you'll be young and rich and free, and young and free and rich and oh, free to marry someone much more entertaining. <laughs> My good Frozine, is this what we've come to? To hang our happiness on another's death? And suppose it doesn't work. Death is often an unwinning visitor. Does it work? And the very fact that you are marrying him is understood that you'll be a widow any day. I really should have put that in the contract. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, he, it would be impertinent of him to last more than three months. Oh, here he is in person. Oh, oh. oh God, Frozine, look at him, his face. <laughs> Oh. Don't be offended, my love, if I come to you in spectacles. <laughs> I know that charms are manifest and bountiful. I, I don't need spectacles to see that. Like, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, ah, but it is with spectacles that we observe the stars. And you are a star, are you not? I mean, certainly a, a heavenly body. The heaviest body in the body of the, uh, the hell and frisine. She seemed to be disguising her delight in seeing. Oh, you've struck her dumb, Your Honour. And young girls are often loath to put into words the feelings seething in their hearts. Oh, really? Come on. You're right. You're... Oh, my beauty. Uh, oh, look, here's my, my daughter. Come to say hello. I should have visited you earlier, madame. Oh, no, your behaviour was quite correct. I should have called on you. Uh, she is a strapping big girl, I fear, but uh, rank weeds always grow the tallest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a ghastly beast. Uh, what did the little beauty say? Oh, she said she's vastly pleased with you, sir. Ah, you do me a great honour. <laughs> He's a horrible brute. Oh, I, I, I thank you again, and I... I don't think... <coughs> da -da! Here comes my son, look, uh, come to pay his respects. Oh no, Christine, it is him, the young man I was telling you about. <gasps> what a bizarre coincidence! Oh, I, I see you're dismayed that I've got two such great galumping children. Don't worry, they'll soon be off my hands. Now, madame, this whole affair is quite unexpected. When my father told me his intentions, I was quite frankly shocked. I know this unexpected meeting was a complete surprise to me. I was totally unprepared. Now, madame, although it's true that my father couldn't have made a fairer choice, 
and to see you here before us, among us, fills my heart with tangible delight. Nevertheless, I can't say I'm happy that you should become my stepmother. It is an honour I am unwilling to accept. You will excuse this plain dealing, madame, but I speak as I find. I look on this marriage with repugnance. Knowing my position, you can see that it flies in the face of my interests. And I'll say, with all the respect my father deserves, that if it were up to me, this marriage would not take place. How impertinent! That's downright rude! What sort of a welcome is that? You have spoken frankly and are all quite in kind. My feelings are the same. You find it repugnant that I am to be your stepmother. I too find it doubly so that you are to be my stepson. As this unpleasant stands contrary to my wishes, I do not wish to displease you. If circumstances did dictate it, I promise you, I would not undergo any marriage that would sadden you. Oh, very clever, very good. He, he pays a clumsy compliment and she pays it back with interest. But uh, seriously, you must excuse the boy. He's a fool. He, he, he'll come round in the end. He doesn't know what he's saying. He did not mean to offend, nor has he. On the contrary, I admire a man who speaks his mind and reveals his true feelings. I would have been disappointed had he not done otherwise. Oh, well, you're very generous to, to, to forgive him, but don't worry, he'll change his tune. He'll, he'll come round in the end, you'll see. No, my father, nothing can change the way I feel. It is important Madame is fully aware of that. You see, there he goes. He's a, same with everything. He exaggerates everything. Would you like me to betray my own feelings, father? Well, look, enough. Look, just change your tune. Mend your ways. Very well. You wish me to change my tune, I will. Madame, now, let me put myself in my father's shoes and say that I have never in my life known anyone equal in your charm and beauty. To serve you would be the pinnacle of pleasure. Who wouldn't rather possess you than all the riches in all the kingdoms of the world? No prize would be too great. No mountain too steady high. Steady on, steady on. I was merely paying my compliments on your behalf. Now, I've it. got a tongue in my head. I can pay my own compliments. Thank you very much. Now, let's all sit down. Oh, well, no, we'd be far better off to go to the pleasure gardens now. Then we could come back in time and, and have a nice long chat afterwards. Oh, OK. Well, prepare the horses. I, you, you will uh, forgive me, my love, if I didn't give you something to eat before you had to leave. <laughs> it's all provided for, dearest father. I sent out for a few delicacies. Oh. A few bowls of mandarin, oranges, candied fruit, and sweetmeats. I put it all on your account. <laughs> well, he must have lost his senses, sir. I see. Have I not provided enough, father? I trust madame will forgive me. Nothing to forgive. Now, madame, have you ever seen a lovelier diamond than the one winking at you from my father's finger? <laughs> it sparkles very prettily, that's true. Let's take a closer look. No, no, don't <laughs> It is without a doubt very fine, flashing with a hundred fires. It's nothing to the hand that holds it. It's a gift from my father <laughs> to you. A gift? Yes, you wish madame to have it as a, a token of your love. But what's all this? Look, he's begging you to accept it. I couldn't, too. No, please don't trifle with his affections. He will not take it back. Oh, confound him. Oh, please, too. No, don't insult him by refusing. I'm not... He won't hear of it. But, uh, damn him! Breathe. He's getting angry now. Please take the ring. Humour him. Traitor! Breathe. You see the extremity of his passion. Filthy bastard! Don't scold me, father. I'm doing all I can, but she still seems reluctant. You monstrous! Madame, he's getting angry now, and it's your fault. Please take the ring. You abomination! Madame, you'll give him a seizure. Please take it, please. No, no. Oh, take the blooming ring for no, no, no. sake, if that's what he wants. Very well, I'll take it, <sighs> if it will calm him down, and perhaps I'll give it back another time. <sighs> Just breathe. <sighs> Excuse me, sir, there's someone to see you. Well, not now, not now. Can't you see I'm busy? Apparently, he's got some money for you. Well, why didn't you say so? I'll be back in a minute. Oh, you idiot! You, you've killed me! Father, are you hurt? My gestures have said to her to break my neck. I'm sure you'll survive, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I thought I was doing the right thing. I was wasting time. Well, what do you want, you blackguard? It's your horses. They've um, lost their shoes. Well, take them to the blacksmiths, idiot! <laughs> While we're waiting, why don't I play host and take Madame to the gardens? 
we can take tea or something. Valet, keep your arm in. Save what you can and take it back to the shops. Yes, sir. Oh, how accursed am I having such a son? Is he trying to ruin me or what? Out here we can speak more openly. Yes, madame, my brother's told me everything. And yes, I know, alas, I know too well the pain of crossed, of thwarted love. So I have special sympathy for you. It is a comfort to know that someone such as yourself should take such a <coughs> interest in my case. Your generous concern is a balm to my wound. Oh, why on earth didn't you let me all this, know all this beforehand? I could have organised things quite differently and avoided this sorry state of affairs. No, no, unhappiness is written in my stars. I'm fated to be unlucky. My darling, Marianne, what are your feelings now? What are you resolved to do? Alas, what am I to do but sit and wait and hope my hands are tied? Hope? Is that all? Do I deserve no more than hope? What about pity to strengthen your resolve, <laughs> kind thoughts to make you resolute, affection to rouse you into action? What would you have me say? Put yourself in my position. What is to be done? Advise me, command me, I'm in your hands. And I'm sure your heart would not wish me to overstep the bounds of decency and duty. But what can I do if what you call your duty is standing guard? If your decency, whatever that means, pushes me away? What would you have me do? Even if I were to overstep the bounds of decency, my sex is bound to. Even then, there is still my mother to consider. She brought me up with such loving care, I can never do anything willingly to displease her. So go to her, win her round. I give you leave to say whatever you wish. And if you think it will tip the scales, I give you the most strongest weapon I possess. A free confession of my love for you. Frozine, dear, dear Frozine, can't you help? Oh yes, of course I'll help you any way I can. You know me, I was just trying to think of where, you know how, how soft and sentimental am I, I am about young people. Do you think my heart is made of stone? No, I'll do something. Any little way I can help. <laughs> like what? Come on, think. Please, do enlighten us. And undo the damage you've done. Well, it's tricky. There's no doubt about that. <sighs> but if we could get your mother to bequest the money that she was going to give to your father to you instead, I think we could do that. Uh, the trouble is, your father is your father. <laughs> yes. By which I mean, if he's crossed in love, he'll just dig his heels in out of spite. And then he's hardly going to let you marry, is he? No, it's got to come from him. He's got to find you, my dear, so abhorrent, so disgusting, that he'll give you up himself. And then you'll get what you want. You may be right. I am right. I know I'm right. It's the only way. The trouble is, how the devil are we going to do it? <laughs> An idea! <laughs> if we could find an accomplice, someone with my skills, who could play the part of a rich grand lady and, and give her a title like Marchioness or Viscountess or somewhere unlikely, like Lower Brittany or something. <laughs> yes, that'll do. That'll do. And then I could skillfully introduce your, her to your father as a rich dowager with over a hundred thousand in, in land and property. Ah, then your father, ah, he would listen because I could say that she's head over heels in love with him and cannot wait to be his wife and is only too happy to share all of her fortune with him. Well, then your father, oh, he'll listen with ever, ever eager ear, I'm telling you, because although he loves you, madame, he loves money more. <laughs> and so guided by the gleam of coin and blinded, he will do whatever you wish, and by the time the Duchess is unmasked, it'll be too late. Have the ring on your finger. Not bad. <laughs> yes, I know just the girl who can play the part. Leave it well to me. <laughs> be sure to I will reward you generously if you succeed, Frozen. Now, my darling Marianne, we have a lot to do to break off this alliance. You must work on your mother first. Use your love. Use your mutual friendship. Use all the skill at your disposal, I beseech you. 
Use your eyes, your lips, your tongue, your entire being, and I'm sure she'll relent. I'll do all that and more, my dear Craig. What's all this? My son kissing his future stepmother and his future stepmother not putting up much of a struggle. Is there something going on? <laughs> Here he is, my father. Uh, then the carriage is ready. You may leave whenever you wish. Since you're not going with them, father, why don't you leave them in my hands? No, you keep your hands to yourself. No, stay here. I need you. <coughs> now, the, uh, <coughs> the stepmother factor to one side, uh, what do you think of her? What do I think of her? Yes, her, her mind, her manner, her, her face, her figure. Oh, you know. I know what. Well, I'll tell you the truth. I'm disappointed. Oh. Her manner, to be blunt, is tarty. Figure, dumpy. Beauty, no more than average face. Well, let me put it this way. She might as well be pulling the coach as riding in it. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to put you off, Father. I suppose if I have to have a stepmother, she'll do as well as any other. But weren't you saying just now? I had to flatter her on your behalf, Father. Did I do wrong? So you're not interested in her in the least? Not in the slightest. Oh, well, that's a shame. Um, you see, I've been thinking, I, uh, looking at her, uh, the discrepancy in age, I, I thought uh, I might give her up. But uh, since I have made certain commitments to her, <laughs> I, I thought I could honour these by passing her on. Well, if you'd have been the least bit interested to you, but you're not so <laughs> To me? Yeah, yes, but... Uh, in, in marriage? Well, yes, in marriage, however. Well, look, I know she's not exactly to my taste, Father, but I suppose for you I could make the effort. No, 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 no. I, I'm more reasonable than you thought. No, I, no, I, excuse me. For you, I will make the effort. Yeah, yes, but what, as you say, what, what is marriage without love and affection? I'm sure I could learn to love her. Don't they say that love can often grow? Yes, but uh, no, no, I, I can't put you through it. No, no, knowing how you feel, I mean... The risks are high, the consequences worse. Now, uh, if when we were talking just then I'd have seen any flicker of interest, I might have considered it. But uh, no, 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 now I'm knowing how you feel, you've changed my mind. No, I'll, I'll revert to my original plan. I will marry the girl. Very well, if that's how things stand, you've given me no choice but to, to open my heart to you and to tell you our secret. The truth is, I love her father. I've loved her from the moment I saw her in the streets. It has always been my intention to ask you to allow our marriage. It was only my respect for you and the fear of displeasing you that held me back. But you, you've been meeting her? Yes, Father. Often? As often as I could. And, and, and did, did, did you tell her of your, your passion, your intentions? Yes, Father. I've even made approaches to her mother. And, and did her mother view your proposals kindly? She was most polite. And does the girl reciprocate your, your, your love? Unless appearances deceive me, I make as bold as to think she may. Well, I'm glad we've had this little talk. I, I'm delighted you've let me into, my, into your confidence. So, my son, here is my advice. You'll kindly forget the whole thing! Stop sniffing around girls I've chosen for myself! And you will marry whoever I tell you to. And that must be the cheapest trick a father has ever played. Now, you listen to me. You may have smarmed your way around the mother, but I have other cards up my sleeve. You dare to tread on my toes. You dare to tread on mine. I saw her first. I your father. Where's your respect? In the list of love, the rules do not apply. Do battle if you will, but I will beat you eventually. I'll beat you. Now, where's my stick? Idle threats. Oh, you give her up, you... Um, Grateful wretch! Oh. Where's my stick? Somebody oh, give me my oh, stick! Oh, oh, no, 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 stop it! Both of you! What's you, going on? What's... Uh, you can't threaten me! Calm I'm, down, calm I'm, down! you talk to me like oh, that! I don't regret a word! Oh, well, beat your father! Let me out! Oh, well, beat, beat your son! Don't beat me, that's allowed! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Major Jack, I want you to be my judge. Tell me I'm in the right! I will, gladly, just stay away from each other! I love this girl and I want to marry her and this, this varlet, he, 
He loves her too and he pees corns <laughs> behind my back. Oh no, he shouldn't do that. Isn't that the most shocking thing that a, a boy should compete with his father? Okay. And shouldn't common decency and filial respect keep him his nose out of my business? Oh yes, they should. You're absolutely right. You stay here and I'll go and have a word with right. you. Since you are the judge, Demetrius Jack, I'll tell you my side of the story. Oh, well, you honour me with your trust. I am in love with a sweet young person who <coughs> reciprocates my feelings and welcomes my attentions. Oh. And my father wishes to, to jeopardise our happiness by seeking her for himself. Oh, no, that's wrong of him. Absolutely, without a doubt. I know. I know. Gets he married at his age, no. he should be ashamed of himself. Go report him this late in the day, he should leave it to someone younger. Oh, you're absolutely right, he must be joking. It's a scandal! I'd better go and have another word with him. <laughs> well, your son seems surprisingly reasonable and not as perverse as we thought. He says he's aware of the respect you deserve and he's willing to bow to your wishes, provided you treat him a little more kindly in the future and find a suitable wife for him by way of compensation. Oh, bless my soul. Well, well tell him, Matrix Jack, if he's willing to take so moderate a line, he'll find me more than, you know, helpful. I, in fact, uh, tell him I, I'll let him marry any girl, well, apart from Marianne, okay. I'll, let him, I'll let him marry any girl that takes his fancy. Fine. Mm. I'll pass that on. <laughs> <laughs> well, your father seems surprisingly reasonable. He says he only got angry because you did, and although he's still wary of your immoderate behaviour, he's happy to grant what you desire, provided you proceed a little more gently and with the deference and respect due to a father. Tell him for me that if he gives me Marianne, my deference and respect will know no bounds, and I will never henceforth oppose his wishes in any way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all settled, he agrees to everything. Ah, couldn't be better. It's settled, he agrees to everything. Oh, oh well, thank heavens that's worked out. My <laughs> <laughs> right, before put upon Major Jack, I am eternally grateful. Oh, it was nothing, really. Oh, I'm delighted with you, Maitre Jack. I, in fact, you des deserve a reward. I, yeah. Go now, I, I promise you. I, I won't forget this. <coughs> <coughs> Sir, I am... Um, I'll kiss your hand. <laughs> Do excuse me, I was angry just now. Oh, think no more of it. I'm deeply sorry. And I'm deeply glad you seem to have come to your senses. How kind it was of you to forgive me so readily, Father. Oh, it's easy for a father to give one, forgive one's children as long as they remain aware of their duties. And do you pardon my previous extravagances, no lingering resentment? Well, if there was, this new obedience, this new respect has washed it all away. And I will remember this extraordinary generosity until the day I die. And, and as for you, uh, ask whatever you desire. If it's in my power and not too expensive, I'll give it to you. <laughs> but what more could I want? What more could anyone want? You've given me Marianne. I'm sorry. So I was merely saying how overjoyed I am that you could give me Marianne. Who said anything about giving you Marianne? You did, Father. I did, yes. But, but, but you promised to give her up. Me? Give her up? Yes. Never. So, so you, you haven't stepped down at all, then? On the contrary, my resolve is all the stronger. You little cheat. So it's back to square one, is it? Nothing will change my mind. I shall do something terrible. Oh, do what you like. But I, I shall no longer look upon you. Promise. That I renounce you. I renounce away. Henceforward, you are no longer my son. Suits me. I disinherit you. Fine. I give you my curse. It's about time you gave me something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monsieur. Quick, I found you. Follow me. Quick, quick, quick. What is it? What? Everything's fine. What is it? What are you saying? Look. What is it? I've been searching for it all day. What is it? Your father's money. I've stolen it. Oh, how did you manage that? Don't worry about that now. Just run. Quick, go. I think I can hear him coming. Go on. I'll find everything later. Stop, thief! Stop, thief! Assassin! Murderer! Oh, 
Give me justice, heaven! Give me justice, sir. Oh, I'm done for. Killed. They've cut my throat. They've murdered me and, and taken my money. Oh, where is it? What's happened to it? How, how can I get hold of it? Where can I run to? I don't that, who's that? Stop, you pilfering bastard! Give me back my money! I've got you! Oh, oh, it's me. <laughs> it's only me. I, I'm going mad. I, I don't know who I am or where I am or what the hell I'm doing. Oh, oh my money. Oh, my poor dear money, my, my only love. <laughs> oh, they've taken you away and now I've lost my, my only support, my pride. My joy and that. Now you're gone. You're dead and buried to me. So what's what's the point <coughs> of living? No, that's it. It's over. It's all finished. I'm dying. I'm dead. I'm buried. <laughs> Will no one bring me back to life, or, or, or bring me back my money, or, or at least just tell me where it is? Just a, just a hint, just a clue. I, I'd be so. What? What's that you're saying? Oh, there's nobody there. Whoever did this must have been planning and spying round the clock, spying on me and picking their moment, like a, when I was talking to that dog of a son. Right, we'll have this out. My entire household will be tortured systematically until we winkle out the culprit. Oh, so many suspects, servants, valets, my son, my daughter, me. <laughs> so many people in there. They all look guilty to me. What's that, what you're saying out there? You know who did it? I don't, what's, who's that? Oh, it's, it's the thief, isn't it? It's the thief, I bet it is. Mm -hmm. ah, well, if you know anything at all, I beg you, tell me. Please, please, please tell me. I, I... <laughs> They're all staring. They're all laughing. <laughs> That's because they're all mixed up in the conspiracy. And there's, there's a whole gang of them over there. <laughs> I know which ones you are. <laughs> right! That's it. I want watchmen, constables, magistrates, judges, torturers, gallows and hangmen. Right! I'll hang them all for this! And if I don't give my money back, I'll hang myself. <laughs> <laughs> God knows I know a thing or two about burglary. If I had a thousand francs for every villain I'd help to the gallows, well, well I'll... It's all very well you telling me you've got the matter in hand. But I tell you, if you, my money is not returned, I want justice against justice, and I'll get it. These things take time, sir. All relevant lines of inquiry must be properly pursued. Now, may I ask you about the contents of the stolen item? What kind of sum are we talking? Twelve, ten, no, twelve for insurance purposes. <laughs> twelve thousand Louis d'Or. Woo! Ten thousand. Twelve. Twelve thousand <laughs> with the insurance system. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not an inconsiderable amount, is no, it? So let the punishment fit the enormity of the, of the crime. If he's not caught, then God knows what he'll do. Nothing will be safe. 
Any more precise denominations of some in question? In shiny gold pieces and bags of loose, <laughs> loose chain. <laughs> right now, sir, is there any particular individual that you suspect? I suspect everyone. And I want you to round up the entire city and surrounding areas. <laughs> Sir, it's always preferable not to arouse too much suspicions on occasions like this. We always like to tempt the party, or parties, out into the open, and then him out <laughs> with the vigour of the law. <laughs> Leading, I'm sure, to a full recovery of your property. I'll be right back. He'll have his throat cut, then roast him slowly over a slow fire, hang him up from the ceiling and plunge him in boiling water. Who, the thief? No, the sucking pig I'm preparing for someone. Uh, no. I thought I'd do something a bit special. Oh, forget that. Who cares about your pig? There's, a, there's another matter entirely now. Uh, don't alarm yourself, sir. Oh, this is all perfectly routine. We'd just like to have a little chat with you, if that's all right. Oh, oh I see she's another supper guest. It's about the menu. Well... And I would strongly advise you against holding anything back. Oh, I won't, madame. No, no, I intend to excel myself tonight. No, I thought we'd rather play my joker on this one. I thought we'd start Will with... you shut up a bit? Oh, no, well, you're right, of course. You know, the raw materials aren't everything one could hope for. But then that's your new steward's fault, with his chief sparing, economising, cutting everything fine anyway. Look, so supper. Look, it's... Shut up and tell me about the money that's been taken. Oh, someone's taken your money. Yeah. Yes. And if you don't return no, it no, to I, me, I, I, I'll no, live no, to no. see you hang. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, leave him alone. Oh, he looks honest enough. <laughs> no reason to lock him up yet. <laughs> Now, come, my friend, just confess. No harm will come to you. <coughs> Your master, I'm sure, will find a suitable reward. He has been robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you must know something. Oh, what's that? This is the perfect opportunity to be revenged on that cocky little steward. He's been ruling the roost ever since he came here. And I've got the bruises to prove it. What are you mumbling about? Oh, don't interfere, sir. He's preparing his testimony. Yeah. And it'll be honest, won't it? Oh, I'll tell you everything I know. Oh, I strongly suspect your new steward of the crime. Valer? The same. But he seems so responsible. Well, quite. He is responsible. <laughs> what makes you say so? Why? Yes, why? Well, I think so, because... Well, that's what I think. Oh, dear. Did you see him sniffing around where, where I'd hidden my oh, money? Oh, yes, yes, absolutely. Ah. Where did you hide your money? In the garden. Oh, well, you see, yeah, in the garden. He was always sniffing about, and... Um, and, 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 and what was your money hidden in? Well, a strong box. Oh, well, see, that proves it. I saw him with just such a box. What do you mean, just such a box? What did he look like? Well, it was a big box. Oh, mine was small. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, the box was small. You know, but the sum inside, it was enormous. So it was big in that sense. Could we be a little bit more precise, sir? You know, what colour was it? What colour? Yes, colour. Well, it was that colour. <coughs> you know, that colour. How would you describe it? Hey. Well, wasn't it a kind of, um, blue, yellow, <laughs> red, <laughs> reddish, grey. Oh, no, well, reddish, grey, yes, or oh, greyish red. Oh, well, there you go, no doubt about it. Take down his evidence. Yeah. Or, oh, how can I have trust him? Yeah. Stupid, stupid. I'll never trust anyone again in my life, not even myself. Monsieur, he's coming. Please don't tell me. Ah, told you. Come here, Valère. Come here and confess. Confess to the most heinous, most, most, most... Despicable. Uh, despicable crime ever known to mankind. I'm sorry, sir, but he hasn't even got the decency to blush. Yeah, bastard. Blush what, <laughs> sir? I don't understand. Oh, you know very yeah. well, you villain. Yeah. Oh, very clever. Yeah, yeah, try well. and hide it, but it's all out in the open now. I know all the shocking details. Yeah. And 
to take advantage of my good nature, my generosity, and, and to, 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 to whoa, 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 your way into my house to pursue your own nefarious ends. How could you? Yeah, very well. Since my secret is out, I need not deny it any longer. Oh, good God! I got it right. <laughs> it was always my intention to approach you on this matter. I was, however, waiting for the moment to be more propitious. But since the truth is out, I only ask that you withhold your anger until you hear the reasons for my behaviour. Reasons? For such an obscene offence? Yes. Well, let's hear it. Better be good. Yes, sir, you are harsh. I have, I suppose, committed an offence, but I'm sure you'll agree, a pardonable one. A pardonable? pardonable. Premeditated ambush, theft, murder. Murder. Please don't be angry. When you hear the reasons for my behaviour, you'll see it's not as bad as you suppose. Not bad? <laughs> not bad? What to open you my would. veins, to, to draw my blood, <laughs> to, to, to pull out my intestines. Oh, no, sure. I'll live to see you hanged for this. <laughs> but sir, please, your blood has fallen onto good hands, sir, and, and the nature of my own will ennoble it. You will see all will be made well in the end. Well, only when you give back what you've taken. Your honour, monsieur, will be satisfied. Oh, what you got to do with honour? Wait, 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 where's the honour in what you've done? Alas, need you ask? Well, <laughs> yes. yes, I do. <laughs> there is one God who drives us all to excess, but excuses everything that we do. Who is that? Love, sir. Love? Yes, love. Love, what sort of love is that? Uh, love of my money, that No, 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 sir, you do me wrong. I had no thought of your money, I promise. I only ask that you let me keep the treasure, <gasps> your treasure, that I now possess. No, 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 you won't, you'll give it back now. That, that, that incredible, oh, he, he robs me of my treasure and then, and then asks if he can keep it. Are you being Surely you don't call that stealing, sir. What else would I call it? To, to rob me of my, my pride, my joy, my treasure. Treasure, yes. Oh, that's so true. And the most precious that you possess. But giving it to me isn't losing it. You may see your treasure whenever you'd like. <laughs> I beg of you. What? Let me keep this treasure. Agree, and I'll do anything that you ask. <laughs> he steals my treasure and then demands to keep it. We've sworn to be together. We promise never to be parted. Oh, very pretty. Yes, well, you, for, you can forget your promises and I'll part you from it soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only death will drive us asunder. And that can be arranged. Even to keep your filthy hands off my money. But, sir, the money's neither here nor there. My intentions are far more noble than you think. Uh, he calls it Christian charity to steal from me and then... Uh, come on, tell me more. But... Sir, you, I would, I'm prepared to suffer the worst that you can inflict, but if you accuse me, sir, then you must accuse your own flesh and blood, for your daughter was equally involved. <gasps> I knew it! <laughs> I knew she'd be mixed up in it somehow, the cow! Bitch! <laughs> but look, I want everything returned. Now you tell me, where is the hiding place? Where is my treasure now? Uh, I've stolen nothing, sir, and to answer your question, still in the house. Still in the house? Still here? Why, well, yes, sir. But if, if you so much as laid a hand... How dare you, sir! You wrong us both! My love is pure and chaste! Pure and chaste? Why, money, folks? And I would rather die than commit any such offence. My love is too honest and tender. Honest and tender? My, my money, Pogs. <laughs> Nothing criminal has profaned my love or sullied the purity I see in her beautiful eyes. <laughs> beautiful eyes? My money box. It makes it sound more like, like his lover. Brindavine, your servant, can attest to our undertaking and she will tell My you... My servant was mixed up in this as well. She was our witness. And she was so... she was so... So taken aback by my, the purity of my love and my desires that she agreed to help your daughter and myself in our endeavours. My daughter is, is raving. Fear of the, of the gallows has addled his brain, that's why. Now, come on, tell me more about her. Look, all you need to know, sir, is that I prevailed over your daughter's modesty. 
And as of yesterday, she is engaged to be my wife. She's engaged to you? We're engaged to each other, sir. Oh, my God, another disaster. I'm <laughs> <laughs> it all down. Oh, crime after crime, calamity after calamity. Sure, not content with robbing me of my money, he takes my daughter as well. Come, madam, take him away. I charge you with theft and seduction, and that's just for starters. But you do me wrong, sir. I deserve better than this. And when you find out who I really am, the rank I really possess, ah! Oh. <laughs> you ungrateful daughter, unworthy no, of... Oh. <laughs> you unworthy daughter, ungrateful and unworthy of the name daughter, unworthy of a father such as myself. Is this is how you repay my loving care? Getting engaged without my consent, but uh, you both made a big mistake, let me tell you. And you can reflect it in the in the monastery. You can repent it on the gallows. My <laughs> rage and passion will not be my judge. At least hear me out before you condemn me. Right, right, yes, yes, I was too harsh. Hanging. <laughs> no. Oh. First, you will be broken on our wheel. And then drawn and then quartered. And then hang. Oh, Father, I beg you oh. not to be so cruel. <laughs> You are my father, it is true, so you have the right, the power, to damn us both. But don't, I implore you, let your passion in its first and fullest flood exceed the bounds of humanity, of wisdom, and of love. Oh. For when you hear the truth, you will understand that we have done you no offence at all. No one you think it strange that I wish to give my soul to him? Were not for him, I'd have no soul to give. Tis thanks to him, your daughter lives. It was he who saved me from the wreck, who battled with the hands of sin. it all got to do with me? I'd rather it left you to drown than do what he's done. Father, I implore you, by the love you Oh, owe shut me. up. I'm not even listening. Let justice be done. Take him away. <laughs> <laughs> Serve your life for me. La, 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 la. Whatever next. <laughs> My dear Nurse Harpagan, you seem distressed. Ah, oh, Signor Anselm, you see, the unhappiest of men now. A legal contract in total disarray now. They murdered me, they robbed me of my money and my honor. And then uh, this, this traitor, this snake, has offended heaven and myself by slithering into my house, disguising himself as a faithful servant, robbing my money and seducing my darling daughter. Why is he always harping on about his money? Oh, yes, they have signed a marriage contract and behind my back. And this is an offence against you, Anselm, and you must bring an action against him. Bring the full weight of justice down upon his head and make him pay for his impertinence. Well, I have no desire to win a wife by force or claim a half that is already given, but I'm more than willing, Harpagan, to exchange your interests as if they were my own. Good. Well, look, here's an honest officer. Uh, she knows the law. Now take him away and, and uh, charge him with the most serious offence you can. Make sure he pays for his crime. How can it be a crime to love your daughter? And as for our engagement, when you find out who I really am, the rank I oh, really a possess... Likely bloody story. The world is full of would-be noblemen and trapped up plebs like you. Just, just because nobody knows who your father is, you, you pick on the grandest parents you can think of. My pride and my honour forbid me to take a name that is not mine by oh. right. All of Naples can speak of my parentage. Yes, beware, young man. Beware what you say, for I know Naples better than you think. And I can quickly test the truth of what you claim. What have I to fear? If you know of Naples, then you know the name of Don Thomas Dalversi. Indeed I do. I know that noble name, if you know it better. Don Thomas of Don Fartface, what do I care? Well, I beg you, noble sir, <laughs> let me continue, we will hear him out. He it was that brought me into this world. He was your father? Yes, sir, he was. Find another story if you can, sir. Don't imagine that you should save yourself by selling us this shameful pack of lies. Do not insult me. This is not a lie. It is the very truth, and I can prove it. You dare to call yourself the son of Don Thomas Dalbasy? Yes, sir, I do. And I will prove it before heaven and earth. Oh, you will never the devil, sir. Know this, the man of whom you speak perished at sea some 16 years ago. His wife, his family, his little children died in the Naples insurrection, which so many families sought flight from. You think you know so much, and yet you know so little. 
His son, then aged seven, and his servant were saved from the wreckage by a Spanish ship. I am that son. The Spanish captain, moved by my plight, took pity on me. Ever since I came of age, I have been a soldier. But recently I learned that my father hadn't perished as I had feared. Heaven guided me here and, fortunate in her misfortune, most blessed in her adversity, I met the fair Elise. The force of my love and the stringency of her wicked father forced me to seek employment in this house and send another man in search of my parents. And you can prove this, sir? Or is it just an invention? An evil canker growing on the truth? Sir, I can. The Spanish captain, a ruby seal which was my father's, an agate bracelet which was fastened to my arm by my dear mother, and Pedro, the Spanish waiter who was saved with me. Then I for one believe you, for your story has set music in my heart, for you are my brother. You are my sister? Yes, yes I am. I could not speak of this until now. Our mother, wait until she sees you, has spoken of our sorry tale <coughs> a thousand times. For heaven also saved us from the wreckage, only to deliver us to the hands of pirates. No. Ten years of slavery ensued, ten years of shame. After which we escaped to Naples in search for a rightful fortune. But at last our Richard has been plundered, and of our father, not a word. So we went on to Genoa, still in search for our rightful wealth. But my mother had to fled the anguish and greed of her relation. So we came here to live as best as we could and what little we had. And here we stayed, and here my mother languished in misery and despair until now. Oh God! How great the workings of thy power! To thee alone can all wonders be ascribed! Embrace me, darling children! Rejoice with me! Rejoice with your father! You are our father? Yes! I am he! Don't Thomas Darmacy! Heaven spared me for that faithful wreck, along with all my money, which I thank God is still intact. And I believed you both dead these sixteen years. And so I, I, after long and lonely voyages, I sold my lands in Naples and decided to settle here and take for myself a wife to soothe the very sorrows of my life. And I changed my name to Anselm, as if to cancel out the pain my former name, my former self had brought me. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so he's your son. He is. Then I hold you personally responsible for the ten thousand gold piece he stole from me. Yes, my son stole from you. Yes, he did. He'll pay for it. Sorry, but who told you that, Maitre Shack? What have you been saying? <laughs> he's the honest officer who took down the evidence. Do you really think me capable of so base a crime? I'm not capable or not, I want me money back. Don't torment yourself, withdraw these accusations. I know where your money is, and I'll tell you, only if you agree to my marriage to Marianne. Where is it? It's quite safe, I promise. Let me marry her, or say goodbye to your money, forever. And nothing's been taken out? No, it's quite intact, I promise. Agree to this marriage. Add your consent to her mother's, who's allowed her to choose between us. But Cleon, there is more than my mother's there is more than my mother's consent that is needed now. For heaven has given me a brother, and here he is, and a father too. He must also give his consent now. Heaven did not spare me from that wreck to stand in opposition to your love. <coughs> and Harpagan, you must admit, this girl would much prefer the son to the father. <laughs> that is the truth of it. That's all there is to say. So let us join our consent together and bless this double wedding, this double joy. I, I won't decide until I see my money. You will see it safe and sound and all accounted for. I, um, I can't afford to buy my children anything for their marriage. <laughs> I have enough for both. You needn't worry on that count. So you'll undertake the costs of both weddings? Yes, with all my heart. <laughs> now are you satisfied? <laughs> no, no, I... Uh, <laughs> would you pay for a new suit for me to wear to the church? Yes, of course I will. Now let us join in these celebrations. 
This should be a happy day. Hang on, hang on. Where do you think you're going? Who's going to pay me for all my work? Well, it's no use to us. Oh, I don't work for free. Well, just, oh, hang on. <coughs> no, ah, oh, all right. Now take him. He should be worth a few bob. Oh. Have him strung up with my blessing. Oh, no, no, you see? You tell the truth, you get beaten, and you tell lies, you get hanged. Harpagon, you will forgive this man his perjury. And you'll pay the officer? Yes, I will. Now let us share the glad tidings, and I will go and see your mother. <laughs> and I will go and see my money. <laughs>